Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we're having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of RSS Extra Solar, which is being made by forum user Andrew Draws Pretty Pictures. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a fun new extension to the Real Solar System mod, which for any of you guys who aren't familiar with RSS, it's uh, basically a mod that turns the Kerbal star system into our own star system. And a lot of you guys on the channel have actually been wanting me to check it out for quite some time, but I never have because, frankly, it doesn't interest me. I already live in our solar system. I want to play a video game when we're in another solar system. And that's why this mod has me intrigued, because... It's an extension to the real solar system mod that adds planets beyond our own sun. And not just any wacky made-up solar systems. They are real-life solar systems that exist, that we know about, and that we have theorized and or observed planets around. And that... That's pretty darn cool. So let's jump right on into the tracking station and ignore Earth, which of course, once again, has been added in by the real solar system mod, and sort of zoom out and I believe face that-ish way. Oh, hold on, we may need to zoom out a bit more. It's kind of finicky. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to appear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a little bit finicky to actually find this thing, as if I'm zoomed in, you can see it kind of fades out there. So we need to zoom a little bit out and face roughly that direction, where we will find the solar system of HD10180. Ah, uh, yes, a um, very uniquely named planet. You gotta love science, they make so many wonderful discoveries, but they are never really that great at naming things. And it is a real solar system that is 127 light years away from us. And in this game, it's 127 light years away from you. So it's definitely a very much end game goal. And now RSS is already a very hardcore mod because it makes the whole solar system life size. And so you're already having to deal with earth gravity, etc. And now you're trying to go 127 light years away, so you're definitely going to need some other mods to get you some really crazy engines. So let's just travel all the way over there, 127 light years in a flash, and we have the lovely star HD10180, which apparently is a very sun-like star, which is always good, and located in the constellation Hydrus. I did not know that. You learn something new every day. Wonderful. And ne very near to that star is our first planet in this particular pack, which is HD 10180B. Are you catching a theme here? It's just kind of going to go in increments from B to C, etc., etc. And this tiny little planet is as you can see on the description here, orbits extremely close to the star and completing an orbit in only one Earth a day and is covered with molten, molten rock. So, uh, probably not some place you want to land with your Kerbals once you eventually do make the trip. Again, 127 freaking light years. You gotta love it. Now, the next planet we have is HD 1018C, which is a uh, apparently Sudarsky Class 5 or V planet. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know planet classifications. And is extremely hot, and so hot that substances usually thought of as solid and strong evaporate in the intense heat. No moons in orbit, which I probably should mention there's no moons on any of these because, well, quite frankly, we, we can't tell that from 127 light years away, at least not yet. So uh, a lot of these planets are going to be without any moons, it's just going to be you visiting it, but quite frankly, I'm okay with that. The next planet we have is of course D, and is a gas giant smaller than the size of Uranus, and it's made of carbon monoxide and several alkali metals floating within this planet's atmosphere, giving it that lovely dark grey color. And then the next one we have, of course, is E, which is, uh, oh, I guess it was a class 5, because this one's a class 3. So there we go, planet. This has a very 
or hmm, has very few clouds. There we go. I can read. Lovely. And appears similar to its neighboring planet of HD 10180F, which of course we'll get to right about now. And it's very similar to Uranus, and uh, due to temperature, there are very little clouds making it appear as a green or a giant cyan globe. Again, I can read. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> then we have G, which I think is my favorite of these planets, because I am a sucker for a nice planetary ring, and it is like unlike, rather, anything in our own solar system. It's located in the Goldilocks zone of its host star, and because of this, its clouds are Earth-like, uh, although it is made mostly of hydrogen, like most gas giants, and has unusually high amounts of water vapor in its atmosphere. Uh, we then have H, which is the largest and also the most distant planet around the uh, HD 10180 star, and has, again, beautiful rings. Which I like the rings on this one better, but I don't know, I like the blue color of the other planet a bit more. And it is the farthest away from the sun as well on this one. And, uh, which I actually already did say, and has, of course, the largest and longest orbital period. Very, very cool. So, yes, that is all of the different planets that we have in this little star system, which, oh, God, if we zoom out, come on, keep going. Excellent. You can see how far away that planet is from the main star, and it's just, it's a lovely little pack. And this is only the first one of multiples to come, which I really, again, really love, because it's real stars, real solar systems that do exist out there. And actually, I didn't point this out when we were at Earth, but apparently this is also in roughly the correct location to Earth. So if you were to look at the Earth night sky, it should be roughly in the right location, which again is a very cool attention to detail on this, that it's not only, you know, the right star, the right number of planets, and the right distance from Earth, but also roughly in the right place on Earth's night sky. And there is a hope to add in multiple other solar systems as time goes by. This is just what we have for the time being. And quite frankly, it's pretty awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking this, and it may very well get me into the real solar system mod to be able to explore our own universe, but, you know, outside of our own boring solar system. You know, I say it's boring, it's really not. I just like playing in other places. But yes, let's actually go and take a bit closer of a look at these with a quick little probe mission, which, oh boy... Hyperedit's gonna probably crap itself when we try and go 127 light years away. Oh, that's gonna be fun. So let's just go and give that a try. Uh, we're probably going to explode. So let's go to. Oh boy, not any of those. We need to go down to. Uh, we'll start it uh, at B. Yes, yes, B. B would be good. And let's make sure we have a good enough orbit. Let's actually make it a million just to be on the safe side. And apply. And wait, does the game... Oh, doesn't kill itself. Wow, look at... Oh, my. We are actually a lot closer than I thought we would be. Hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's look at the map real quick. Oh, my God. Yeah, that is a real close orbit. <laughs> I thought a million would be, a, you know, a bit far away, perhaps, but no, let's make it a bit wider. Excellent. And also get us right there in the sunlight. Beautiful. And, of course, oh, God, blinding sun. Lovely. Excellent. That's, that's just what everyone wants. And, yes, take a look at our lovely new planet here, uh, which, of course, this one is HD10180B. Oh my lord, it's freaking massive. <laughs> but also, very cool. Very cool indeed. And to think we are, in fact, 127 light years away from Earth at the moment. I'm amazed that the game can handle that distance calculation. That is actually pretty impressive. Now, let's, uh, we're not going to go to all the planets. Let's just head to maybe one or two others just to get a closer look at things. So let's head over to, hmm, what next, what next? Let's go to, let's go to E, yes, same altitude. Oh boy, again, we are really freaking close. Okay, let's, you know what, let's go to 10 million. 
That should be a bit better. Oh, yeah, look at that gorgeous blue atmosphere there. Wait, isn't this one supposed to be a gas giant? Well, I mean, I guess gas giants still technically would have that atmosphere, but just thicker. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. So these planets are definitely going to be a heck of a lot larger. And also, I do have to remember we are in the real solar system mod, so these are life-size planets. Even if we were around Earth, we'd still need to be at a much higher altitude because it's to scale, unlike Kerbal Space Program, which all the planets are much smaller scale to the real world. So I gotta get that through my brain. But yes, we have this lovely one here, and let us go and check the two ringed ones now. Uh, I believe G was the first. Let's actually, let's actually add another five in there. Lovely. Ah, there we go, and we're right at the beginning of the lovely rings. Very, very cool indeed. Ah, just look at that gorgeous color to it. And of course, the beautiful rings that we have here. And let's go out of the map view. Excellent. And just get a nice, a nice overall look at things. It's very, very cool indeed. Can't see the rings from this angle, but oh well, c'est la vie. Now let's head to the last planet, which of course has the much more pronounced rings. And that would be da, 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 da. H. Lovely. Oh boy, we're still really close. Let's go back another like 10 million. There we are, and I can see the I can see the line of the ring right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, let's actually go to the map mode. Ah, yes, we're right inside those rings there. Excellent, excellent. And yes, there we are, and we can actually see our solar system way in the distance. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, so very, very far away. But yes, that is the RSS Extra Solar mod, which of course adds in planets beyond our own sun. And that's that's pretty darn cool. If you would like to check out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. And whether or not you're a fan of the real solar system mod or not, I would definitely say to give this a try, especially if you're up for a challenge. Again, 127 light years away. That is going to be one heck of a trip that you're going to need to make one beautiful ship for, perhaps even a generational ship, which could be quite a cool little challenge. But yes, I hope you do enjoy the mod, and that, of course, you have enjoyed this episode today, and that you do come back for the next, when we will be looking at what hopefully proves to be another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.